Okay. Okay. Are you rolling? I am rolling, yes. Stella, do you know how this turned out? Should we watch? You can critique my uh Ooh. Let's watch it. Let's see what let's see what we got here. Okay. Let's do it. This is not an edited recipe. But I can't make cubes with this. Fuckers. I didn't look carefully enough. I'm in a fog. I cannot be in a fog for this moment. So Whoa! God damn it! 321, motherfucker, 322! Get the butter! Oh! Hey. Hey, Stella. How's it going? Your infamous impossible pecan pie. Dun there we dun. Have it. Dun. I wanted to find out a little bit more because this is this this recipe that's been like floating around in my peripheral awareness for a long time that you you have this recipe that you basically refuse to publish. What is the backstory here? You did you was this a pie you made in like restaurants or something? I guess this has been my personal method for making pecan pie. So when, it, when I was writing my book, we included this recipe. And then when we had the recipes sent off for testing, because all the recipes were professionally tested by third parties, a lot of them came back saying, you know, a lot of red flags appeared in this recipe. And it's not that, it's not that there's anything wrong with the recipe or that the recipe is like fundamentally broken in some way, only that traditionally pecan pie is just about as easy as it gets. Uh, my editor felt like this was not a good inclusion for the book that it would not be what someone was actually looking for when you flip open to a pecan pie recipe you don't want to have your very like existence challenge i was talking with ed one time at a public forum i think ed asked me what kind of recipes were cut from the book and that's when this pie first went public oh that's how people found out that this pie existed so for the people who have caught wind of this recipe and internet stalked you and begged and pleaded for it and you've cackled <laughs> malevolently and sent it to them. Uh, do you, have you heard back on um, how it's gone? I have heard some success stories and okay. that's good, but I, I hear a, a lot more failure. My ambition as a, and you know I'm not a baker, is to attempt this pie and see if I can do it uh, or not. I believe in you, Daniel. <laughs> I don't know if you should. All right, so if you'll send the recipe, and I don't want to see it in advance. That's the other thing. I want to make it cold. We're going to do it. Um, I believe in you. And you'll, you'll, you'll laugh one way or another. <laughs> I'll give you something to laugh about. I'm laughing already. Okay. All right, thanks, Stella. Godspeed, Daniel. <laughs> okay, bye. You got it? Yeah. It's hard. You're gonna you serious? Did you look at it? <laughs> <laughs> I need coffee. All right. Let's see here. Okay, so what we need to do before anything else is just turn the oven on. Upper oven, bake, 350. Start before it gets hot. I better put this rack to the lower middle position. These things matter. Did she act? Is is it always been called Impossible Pecan, pecan Pie, or did she title that just for me? There's not much to this. Eggs, water, sugar, salt, butter, some vanilla extract, scotch or bourbon. Well, now we're having fun. Right after my coffee, pecan halves. Pecan. I say pecans. <laughs> Pecan, what do they say in the South? Pecans? Pecan, yeah. Pecan. My grandma's like, she's from Georgia, so it's pecan pie. Pecan pie. Before getting started, place the whole egg. Is my coffee done? So when you are looking at like a recipe that you've never seen, how do you approach it? Well, up until a few minutes ago, I wasn't processing anything. <laughs> but um, I think with savory recipes, maybe I'm a little bit more lax because I'm so comfortable in that zone, but with with anything where I'm not comfortable and I'm way out of my comfort zone here. In case it's not, it hasn't been established, I am not a baker. So I'm gonna look at everything. I'm gonna look at the time, about 30 minutes, but that's just for the filling. And I also have to make the pie dough and that's total time of about two and a half hours with about 30 minutes of active time and the blind baking is gonna take me, uh, holy cow, about an hour plus. This is gonna take a little while, I don't know. 
Look, there's a whole troubleshooting section. Stella cares. This recipe depends on an accurate digital thermometer. To be certain it can register 335, then test its accuracy by making sure it reads 212 in a pot of boiling water. My confidence is so shaken that I think the first thing I should do is get a pot of boiling water going and make sure the thermometer works. All right, I haven't made this pie yet. I may, I may fail miserably, but I feel like Stella has been so clear about what's important here that if it's really an impossible pie. Maybe it's just because people don't know how to follow directions. We clip this onto the pot. Boop, 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 boop. On. 211. 212! <laughs> Boom! We're accurate. Let's see if this oven is actually running at 350. 300, it's under temp. I'm gonna put it up to 400 and hope that it gets to 350 in the oven. This says it's preheated now, let's see. It's at 350. This oven runs 50 degrees under. And over or time, 65. over time it drifts too. Like if you put it at 350 and then like several hours later it will be at 350. Low protein, all purpose flour such as gold metal. Do you think I chose too big of a bowl? And now we're gonna add one half ounce of sugar. That's only a tablespoon. And salt, whisk them together in a medium bowl. Cut butter into cubes, no smaller than one half inch, and toss with flour mixture to break up the pieces. No! What am I doing wrong? They're not cubes. But I can't make cubes with this. They're too big. <laughs> I don't know what went wrong there. I just, my brain glitched. So I'm gonna cross cut this into, yeah. wow, I just got to phone a friend really early in the process. <laughs> Coffee. With my fingers, I, Separate these cubes into pieces. Smash, woo! Smash, this is quite fun. Smash, on a generously floured work service, roll the dough into a roughly 10 by 15 inch rectangle. Super generously floured, you know what I'm saying? Roll, roll, roll. Mine just looks like an amoeba. Stella, this is where you're gonna see my, my dough technique. More flour? Oh, I'm sticking. I am sticking. Then close the newly formed packet like a book. It's a little thicker on this side, so I'm gonna cheat it slightly to that side. Whoosh, sound effects. Whoosh. Trim, trim, trim. Fold overhang over itself to create a thick border that sits on the top edge of the pie plate. And then you get this really nice edge because it's a folded edge. I know people have all sorts of beautiful methods for doing this, but I'm just gonna do the old fork. Refrigerate at least two hours. Fuckers. Fuckers. I didn't look carefully enough. All right, so it's been about two hours that uh, my, my pie shells have been resting in the fridge and it's time to blind bake them. So I'm just looking here. Now the oven's already long preheated, pressing so it conforms to the curves. So I just wanna say full coverage on that pie crust and that's great. With the foil you mean? With the foil, yeah. What happens is sometimes people just like get a small strip and they oh. kind of roughly cover it. Mm -hmm. And then when they fill it with the sugar, it's enough that the sugar is near enough to the crust that when it's cooking, moisture and fat from the crust can bubble in. So it has to be complete beyond Completely the crust coverage. Completely shielded. Fill it with sugar. The sugar is to act as a weight to keep the pie dough pressed to the, to the pie plate and maintain its um, form and position. So you get some toasted sugar too, which is something Stella uses a lot to add more complex flavor to her desserts. Put that in there. All right, let's, uh, let's check this. Oh, do, do. Can you imagine if I dropped it right now? You can see the sugar has toasted, whoa, on top. Oh, it contracted so much right there. It won't be perfect. What do you think, so, what do you think? So yeah, so this is the deal with, with blind baking, is like for some reason, a lot of people, common issue, think that it's just like, you gotta throw a little bit, like that you're holding the bottom down. It's like, gravity's holding the bottom down. Mm. It's the 
Pie dough on the buttery slopes of the side that gravity's bringing in. Do you so like it's like a pack physical it? barrier. Do you like press it to make sure it's really pressed into the sides? I, you can't pack sugar, it doesn't compact, but like if there's a... You know what I mean? Because the yeah. foil might yeah, not be yeah, fully... Yeah, the foil might not be flush. So I do yeah. like use a spoon to kind of like make sure that the foil is pushed all the way in. Before and you I put the of, sugar in? No, when I put the sugar uh, in, because okay. the sugar will push the foil. Right. Um, and then you make sure the sugar comes up a little above the rim because it's yeah. it's acting as a physical barrier. It's not like some magic situation. Right. It shrank right there, didn't it? That's so sad. So I think I think I can start to assemble the rest of it. This is toasted sugar. Now this can be plain or toasted, so so it works either way. Diamond crystal kosher salt. Oh, I have to find the pecans. Pecans. We'll take three. Poor show, still cooking rice. <laughs> Combine water. Here we go. Ready? Water going in. No, 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 water sound effects. Set this over medium heat. Now this is a very powerful burner, so we're gonna go. Back. Yeah, so that's like another point where you have a real uh, home kitchen advantage, chef advantage mm -hmm. to this process, is that you know, you're know you able to see say that this is an enormous burner. Yeah. It's oversized for my pot, like mm -hmm. medium heat is gonna be way too much. Mm -hmm. And that's something that like, I get a lot of emails from, from people who can't get past the first step of the recipe, which is bringing something to a boil. And there's like, I was there for 45 minutes and it didn't, I'm just like, no, <laughs> it's okay. Like, right, you can boil. This is, not, this is just like a guideline to push you through the process, but you still have to do individual adjustment on the ground. All right, stirring with a fork until the sugar dissolves and the syrup begins to bubble about seven minutes. Why a fork, Stella? When you're stirring with a fork, like sugar crystals can get attached to it. So you wanna, when you're done, just get rid of that fork and a fork's just a really easy item. If you say a spoon, someone might grab like a giant serving spoon, but if you see a fork, just kind of whisk it up, mix it up. I'm gonna go by her cue. So, so we got um, pretty well dissolved at this point, but I see no bubbles. As soon as I see bubbles, I'm gonna start washing down the sides. Oh, oh, I see bubbles forming. Let me give this one more stir. All right, fork goes away and we wash down the sides, being absolutely free with the water. When you're washing down the sides like that, making a caramel, mm -hmm. that's to, you're trying to eliminate sugar crystals, sugar crystals which can mm -hmm. mess up your caramel mm -hmm. later. And it doesn't matter how much water you add because when the caramel cooks, yes. its temperature is yeah, it intrinsically can't tied to, to, the water to the water content. Yeah, so at this stage, if you wanted to, you could pour in a gallon of water and the consistency of your pie would still be perfect and exact. You just have to wait around it'll for It'll take longer, but reaching yeah. the temperature. Thermometer, don't want it touching the bottom. I'm gonna retract it just enough. Turn this on without stirring until the syrup is honey colored. 325, 208. It's just stalled at 225. Something's wrong. This is what it all comes down to, is I just stand here doing nothing while freaking out. 325, we're going to 325. 325. Don't forget the number, 228 still. Come on, 230. Do we see steam rising off of it? Yeah, yeah, 233, 233, I got 233. Do I hear 234, 234, 234? 273, 274, 275. So I have 29%, I'm gonna swap out the battery. Real fast, 297, 309. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh no, 311. Joel, 312. I'll go wide. 313. You're making me nervous. You could have changed it to 275. Why is, why is 314. It's not catching. Oh my What's God. going on 316, Joel? Uh, <laughs> terrible time to change a battery. Jesus 317. <laughs> The caramel waits for no one. 321, mother, 322, get the butter. 323, 324, 325, off. Butter goes in, off the heat. Stir, 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 stir. Oh my God, it hit 328 already. 331, come on, come on, cool down, cool down. Don't get any hotter, 328. Well, it smells great. 
buttery and caramelly. And so this has to now cool to 200, it's a 266. While it's cooling, I can do the eggs and the booze. One, two, three, four, bourbon. Whisk the eggs and bourbon in a medium bowl until well combined. Then fold in the pecans with a flexible spatula. Okay, I think these are as coated as they're gonna get. 254, so once again, we're gonna have to wait. I wonder if Stella were here, would she already be shaking her head being like, you have failed, this is wrong? Or would she be like, yeah. Get the yeah. No, you did a really good job. People crystallize it a lot at this stage. When this hits 200, we pour the hot butterscotch over the eggy pecans. The butter will seem to pool out of the mixture and you may notice a few specks of curdled egg, but that's A-OK, -okay, really. 200, there we go, okay. Ouch, clip comes off. Pour the hot butterscotch over the pecans. Oh, yeah, come on. That's like straight out of a candy bar commercial. Fold this all together. Oh, some of this candy is hardening. This is definitely a moment where if I didn't, if she didn't warn you that it was gonna look real messed up at this point, I would definitely be like, I don't know what I did wrong, but I did something wrong because there's no way this is right. The butter will seem to pull out of the mixture. Oh, maybe that's what I'm seeing is butter pulling out of the mixture. I don't know what I'm seeing. I think I need to put it in the pan. Get in there. Oh, liquid -y. Oh my God. Don't worry about spreading it around. Just go with it. For real? For real? Do you think I really, do you think this is totally wrong? All right, we're going in the oven. This is gonna seal the deal. 30 minutes. I'm waiting for like an omelet to form on the surface and then I'll know that I f***ed it up. I'm pretty sure you don't want scrambled egg in your pecan pie, right? That seems, that seems like it would be a problem. There's also this one pecan just sticking up and I'm, I, I want it to like sink down, but maybe it won't. I don't know what to expect. I don't know what's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Hey Google, stop. Carefully, carefully, carefully. This is hot. Ouch. And as long as it's here, let's just see where we are. Got about 20 degrees to go. Again, 211, 209. So it's been a little longer than the estimated final 15 minutes, but I finally got a reading that's right in the ballpark of 210. So I'm gonna take this pie out. Oh, right in the center, let's just see. 210, that's great. Let's let it cool for a few minutes and then I'll tent it with foil uh, and uh, we'll go home. Bright and early-ish. <laughs> Waiting overnight. Looks pecani. It has settled. It was all puffed up uh, yesterday when it was hot out of the oven and it definitely has settled. You know, just looking at it, what do I think? I think maybe I blind baked the crust a little bit too long. It's a hair, a hair dark in spots, but not, I don't think that's a critical failure. It's not burnt. Um, the nuts, darkened a lot. Maybe it's a nice flavor, just a little bit of some darker roasted parts. We'll see. All right, so we can cut through it. Ooh, that's a big slice. That's a lot of sugar right there. This looks like a nice pie plate made by Vissiwasik. <laughs> Vichy, made by Vichy Swaz. Vichy Swaz, that's the name for me. <laughs> made by Vicky Wasik herself. Uh, this is like, like when you're stealing a car, right? It's like 
Did you? Oh, got it. Fully cut through here. What do we have? Well, the, the tip of my pie slice came off. No scrambled egg. It's looking, it's looking official, I think. Yesterday's sugar stirring fork is today's pie fork. And look at that, look at that crispity cr crust on the bottom. I rolled it really thin. Wow. Super thin, probably too thin. Okay. It smells like caramel. That's what it is. And nutty. You needed me to tell you that, right? <laughs> the caramel and nut pie smells like caramel and nuts. Uh -huh. That's a really good pie. No, so one of the things with pecan pie is it has, like Stella was saying when I called her, the traditional one made with corn syrup has that like kind of jelly layer underneath. I'm always a little bit on the fence about how I feel about that. And this doesn't have it. It has this gooey, it's still soft though. It's not too, look, it's like very smushable, but it's a little bit less jelly-like. It tastes really good. Look at that crust. Look at the flakes on that crust. You can like chip them off. Success? This is success. I made the impossible pie. I made the impossible pie. <laughs> and 95% of everyone else who tried failed. I feel like it's not really an impossible pecan pie recipe at all. The damage you're doing to America <laughs> right now can't really be understated. <laughs> this is terrible, Daniel. This is terrible. I, I really wanted you to fail. <laughs> I wanted people to I be had like, wow, tiny, Daniel Gretzer can't make it. I had tiny, to, tiny failures, but. Yeah, it's, just, it's, a, it's a touch thicker because it cooked longer. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's like a little, definitely a little bit darker than it should be. I, I never use internal temperatures for baked goods ever, whatsoever, never. Oh, that's Under no circumstances. Um, I have been pr required to provide them under duress by <laughs> my publisher, uh, um, and that kind of led people to start asking for it more often from me on recipes and oh, series wow. eats because it's in my book. Um, and that wouldn't, again, that wouldn't be my first, so you first would, choice. For making something like the caramel, you would... Yeah, for, you, for you any want, kind of stovetop project. But once you're in the oven... But baked goods never. I did have, there's no doubt that I had certain distinct advantages, yeah. even coming into this recipe yeah. without having seen it before. Yeah, I mean, you're just the culinary director of a major <coughs> website dedicated to food. Just like a little bit of advantage <laughs> but it's, compared to like yeah, a random no. yeah, I, the, American I, citizen attempting this pie for the first time. I have some advantages there for sure. Um, but I do think like the the crust. People the, are going to take this as a challenge. They're going to be like, oh, I can do it. The that. crust is more, in, there's more intuition, right? Like there's more, like the rolling, no matter how much instructions you give, rolling a pie yeah, crust is something. Yeah, I can't come to your kitchen and make it for you. You have, yeah, you, you have to you embody have to it. You have to figure that out. This is why I'm so afraid of whenever this is airing, it's be so close to Thanksgiving. Like, People are going to want this. Don't play yourself. Like, right. this is not the time to be like, oh, I can do it. I'm going to show off to my whole family. Like, you don't want to have this blow up. And I think on, that's one of the things that ultimately wears one down as a recipe developer is, you know, if someone's having a great time, they're probably not going to email you about the great time that they're having. Yeah. But if someone has egg on their face on a family holiday or a major uh, occasion and if something blows up, you know, they're, they're looking to understand why that happened and they're not happy. What would you give Daniel, like, looking at his pie book, how would you grade it? Eight out of ten. I'll take it. I'll take it. That's fair. Yeah. 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 Uh, I felt like having done it once, do it a second time, yeah. I could iron out the yeah. little And I mean, I could probably iron out a lot if I ever revisited this recipe, but you I, have no plan I on wrote doing. it down in like 2013 yeah. and that's what you get. Not that you're getting it. Not that you're, no one's getting it. We're not publishing this recipe. And you're not getting any help. I think the comments are just going to be people who are like, why are you showing us this and not letting us yeah, have this, this recipe? Yeah, this is messed up. It's psychological warfare. It is messed up. I agree. It's a little <laughs> bit rude, but it's also, I think, uh, hopefully this is more about what how are... to follow a recipe and yeah. less about this recipe needs to make its way into the world because Stella's been very clear that like she, that's not going to happen. Yeah. And it's a little bit about what's our own internal process for, ed for selecting a recipe to appear on the site. Mm -hmm. Like this has such a steep failure rate that like the comment section would just be like, one star, my house burned down, like kind of thing. And that's not, you know, know. And you're so, that's, not, that's not what we want. That's what you're kind of so good at wanna... helping people through your published recipes that I totally get why. It's a lot. It's this a lot is to one ask. you just don't want to 
feel the responsibility of fielding. I'm, and I, yeah, I've, I've abdicated all responsibility. Yeah. yeah. So, just good. You did it, I'm proud. Well, thank you for letting me do it. Thank you wow. for sharing your recipe oh, yeah. with me. My pleasure. So, at Daniel Grosser for the recipe. <laughs> like Daniel. <laughs> You're going to get so many emails. Great. That's it. Great. You did it. I'm so proud thank of you. you. Thank so you. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. I didn't totally humiliate myself. No, you did great. I'm proud. As a relief. <laughs>